Hi guys, um, it's me, Val Toxic Free. Um, I'm making a quick video, um, and this is just like a, an intro to a few more videos that I will be making on this subject. I don't know if you've been watching any of the videos that I've been posting or actually watched my last video. We've been waiting for a video to go up about Evening Ransom and the weekend or the week that she spent in, um, in Mexico with Kim, David and about five or six other people. The video has just come out and I will post it down below and I'm also going to put one or two little clips in this video just to let you know what's been going on. Um, I don't actually know where to start. I just started, I pressed play on this and I really don't know where. David, um, David DeMars needs to be um, taken off YouTube. David DeMars is a predator and David DeMars has, um, well, if you've, I'm going to play the clip and in the clip it um, explains a section of what happened in the evening with a lady called Elle who was left alone with David and David went back to her apartment. I'm just going to play it. I bought a bag of Cheetos from a local store and told him I needed to go to bed. He insisted that he would walk me to my room. I thought that was nice of him. We got to my room, I opened the door and immediately he laid on my bed. I was staying in a small condo but had a small, I had a sofa near my bed. I found it very strange that he went straight for the bed. I immediately thought, oh God, was I giving him the wrong vibes. He then starts talking about what he likes to do in sexual situations. Double penetration, two guys, one girl, his porn obsession, etc. He keeps commenting on my boyish body and that I have no curves. Mind you, I have a very curvy body. He tells me that he hasn't had sex in many years and then he tells me he had sex, he had several threesomes just recently. He then throws himself off the bed and starts pacing back and forth. He starts ranting about his uh, this awful meetup, that he came here to get clients and network. He goes on and on about Kim and how she's addicted to meth. He didn't like the way Exit and Kim were staring at him the whole night, how Evening kept his tequila. He said Emma was a narc with three kids and that she was going to take down Jack. At this point, he's screaming. The owner of my Airbnb made it clear that noise complaints would not be tolerated. I asked David to please keep his voice down. This is when things got really bad. He started calling me a cock tease and a whore and that I will never ever cross his boundaries again. He kept saying fuck you and over and over again. I immediately panicked but did my best to calm, stay calm. I began apologizing and told him that I was, I was drunk and that this is why I can't drink. He's right, I am a cock tease, and this is all my fault. I was completely terrified at this point. I was able to calm him down, and he lay down on the bed, back to the sexual topics. I was trying to change the subject when he told me that he was that it really irks him is when a man's knee grazes his. I don't remember what comment set him off again, but he went into an anchor, another rage, and stormed out of my room. I locked the door and grabbed the kitchen knife. I was extremely shook and paranoid, barely slept that night. I called my mom and therapist right away. My mom wanted me to book the first flight home, out of there. I pretty much stayed up the whole night, up the whole night, questioning everything. I received an email from Kim stating that we should all meet at David's Beach. I spent the day at my pool and several hours at the beach looking for the girls. The entire day went by and still I had never found anybody. Um, and basically, she explained to me that uh, the time they were supposed to meet at 9:30. She said she got there at 9:45, and this is the beach in front of David's uh, condo. And she stayed until about one o'clock and never saw anyone. And then, um, then this is what happens next. Um, I still I couldn't find anybody. I vaguely remembered where David's hotel was and thought perhaps that Kim was there. The front desk told me where he was staying in room 202. He opened the door and I asked him if Kim had contacted him. He told me that he hadn't heard from anybody all day, but that he would like me to come in and talk. I feel like an absolute fool for being in enclosed space with him again, but it is what it is. So that's, you know, that's where she made a critical mistake was going back there. She was looking for Kim and, you know, probably we sit, we sit in the balcony and I asked him about last night. He tells me that he is no longer upset 
but he does know why everybody is ignoring me. This is when it gets really creepy. <laughs> this is why it was already really creepy. This is even creepier. He shows me a Facebook message that he sent to Kim that says, Elle is not awesome. She spent the night gaslighting me, dragging me around town. Many other things, I almost hit the floor. I asked him, why would you say something like that? I don't know anybody here. I start crying because I'm scared, and he went absolutely ballistic. He gets down on his knees beside me and kept saying, look how scared you are, baby. I want you to feel safe with me. I want you to trust me over and over again, he was saying that. It was literally, I was literally shaking. I felt, it felt like I was with him for an entire year. I told him that I was leaving. Again, he insisted that he walk me to my room. We walked past Kim and the girls eating dinner in a restaurant several times. He grabbed my arm and told me, just keep walking. I was praying that one of them would see me, but sadly no one did. He grabbed my arm and told me to keep walking. didn't see me and were ignoring me because of the Facebook message he sent to Kim. He too made it seem like that as well. We get to my room and this time I stood my ground and didn't let him in. I was absolutely destroyed the next day, convinced that everybody hated me, trying to figure out how I could approach Kim and the rest of the girls. This was the last time I saw or spoke to him. He made many comments about the other girls being bitches. He went back and forth about Kim. One minute he liked her, the next minute she was a manipulator. He made so many negative comments about homosexuality, derogatory comments about my body, an absolute mind fuck. I honestly didn't know what to believe at the time. I was left beyond confused, scared, and alone. I've only been away from my ex narc for six months trying to pull my life together. This was the last thing I expected to have happen at a meetup. I went to Mexico to meet other survivors, perhaps make a new friend. I didn't know how to handle a situation like this. Best wishes, L. So you've seen that. That's only a clip of what happened in the evening. Now. The story goes that Kim didn't actually know that he was um, a predator and then she says that she does know. I'm not going to go into too much of it because I have to watch Evening's video again and take it all in because it's it's upset me, it's made me angry, I'm fuming. I've spent seven months since New Year's trying to expose this, this, this person who now I know is a narcissist predator, sexual predator. And um, it, it sickens me that I've spent seven months being smeared and slandered and defamed by this person. And I didn't really get as far as I wanted to. And I just thought, that's it. You know, I've tried. I've done my bit. Now he's gone and done what, what, what you've just heard and seen on the clip. Um, there is a hell of a lot more that you need to watch. If you watch the clip of the video down below, I am going to make more videos on this. Kim, you've supported David. Um, apparently you didn't realise that he was the person that he is. You did realise because for the past seven months you and him have been in cahoots like this, smearing and um, trying to destroy me and my channel. So do not try and get out of it. And I know the only reason that, like I said in my last video, that you don't want to throw David under the bus because he will throw you under the bus. Um, and you're literally, you've got each of the secrets. So you're in a pickle, aren't you? You're in a pickle. Um, and I'm afraid once this video goes out and once I make more videos about this and once Evening's uh, video goes out and once, um, I, don't, I just don't know what to say. I'm actually in shock as I'm speaking to, in this. It was only about an hour ago I actually watched the video and I'm absolutely appalled, saddened and disgusted that a life coach can go to a meetup to meet abuse survivors, someone who's just been out of abuse for six months and abuse them. You use your channel to attract people. You're a sexual predator and I've known for a long time who you were, which is why you've tried to smear me and which is why you've tried to destroy my channel and you've tried to make me be crazy and borderline and sociopath and psychopath and you name it, every single name you've called me under the sun because you didn't want my words to be of any value to anybody and you wanted me to go away quietly so that you could continue doing your predatory behaviour on your channel. You may have 15,000 subscribers, but they were subscribing to a man that they thought was a coach. They were subscribing to this man that sat in a fake office in his bedroom with his props around him, pretending but actually what he was doing is mind control. 
He's been controlling everybody and Kim has been supporting him. I'm not going to go on much more in this video. Um, I want to get it out there as fast as possible. I'm going to share this and I want you to share this. And I don't want you to, I really, I, I don't know what to say. I'm, 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 I'm appalled. I'm absolutely appalled. I watched the video and I nearly cried. Guys, you need to take this serious now. Like I say, there's a, there's life coaches that pretend. I'm going to make another video when I'm more calm. I'm less angry. I make more sense. I'm going to put a lot of clips together and I'm going to make my own video and I'm going to bring these two down. I don't care how much smear I get from people that don't trust, believe me or understand what's been going on. So this is just a little preview of what I'm going to say and what I'm going to do but I just wanted you all to know that um, what is going on is, is real, is disgusting, is heartbreaking and it should never have happened. And I've known all these months what we find out tonight. Guys, please support me in this in this and share this video and I don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm in a state at the moment. I'm very upset and very angry at what's been going on. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, but David and Kim, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say to you. You've supported each other in abusing people and you're disgusting. You are absolutely disgusting.